All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the lecture slides from the publisher for chapter four. Okay, so here is real similar to information to what we had on the previous slides, but without the graphic. So the four major groups of organs are roots, stems, leaves, and flowers. So it's organized from organs and then into tissues because each organ is going to be made up of tissues. And the tissue is going to be a group of cells that performs a similar function. So like when we talk about our xylem, the xylem is a group of cells that is for water transport, and it's going to be made up of the vessel elements, and it may also have fibers with it as well. So you could have more than one type of cell for each tissue, more than one tissue per organ. Okay, so the meristems, those are going to be continuously designed, dividing regions of cell growth. At the apical meristems, that's where we're going to get our new shoots from. The shoe apical meristem looks like a dome at the top of the shoot tip. And then we also have the root apical meristem, and that's going to give rise to the new cells as a root to grow down into the soil. So primary growth or apical growth is going to be straight up and down. The apical meristems they're responsible for the primary growth or the apical growth. All right, so here on this one, it's almost like they've pulled away the layers of a woody plant. So this is kind of cool because we can see the cambial layer in here and it should look kind of similar to what I drew on the iPad earlier. Okay, so at the very tip of the shoot, we have the apical meristem. That's going to be the most active area of cell division that's going to give rise to our shoots, like our branches and our leaves. The protoderm is going to give rise to the epidermis. And then the cambium, that's going to give, the procambium gives rise to the vascular cambium and the cork cambium. So remember, the cork cambium gives rise to the bark, and then the vascular cambium will give rise to the xylem and phloem. We can also see under the point where the leaves are emerging here, we have a little axillary bud, okay? And the axillary bud is covered up by the node. All right, and then last but not least, we also have the ground mary stem. And the ground mary stem gives rise to the ground tissue. That's the parenchyma, calenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Okay, so the lateral mary stems, those are the cambia. So lateral mary stems are responsible for the secondary growth. Remember, that's like the tree trunk getting wider. That's going to increase the girth is another way of putting it. And it does happen both in the roots and the stems. The vascular cambium, that'll give rise to the xylem and the phloem. Those are primarily going to function for support and also for conducting the sugars, the nutrients, and the water. And the cork cambium, that's going to give us the bark or the periderm. That's going to be just inside the outer bark or just inside the surface of the stem. Okay, so grasses and the monocots are a little bit different. Um, if you've ever noticed, they're typically just going to grow straight up and down. They only have primary growth. Um, but they still do have meristems that allow for primary growth. And those are going to be similar to where the nodes are located. Let's see if you have a picture here. We don't. Um, but they'll be at the place where the leaf blade attaches. If you peel it back, you can see a tiny intercalary meristem. And those are going to help the stem to grow longer. 
the grasses and the monocots, they don't have the vascular cambium, so they're not going to have secondary growth and they're not going to grow wider in general. Okay, so first let's look at the simple tissues. And as you can see with the parenchyma cells, they really do look kind of like bubbles. To me, I feel like the, the cell wall made out of cellulose because it's so clear and crinkly, it actually kind of looks like cellophane to me. So the walls are thin and flexible um, and these are going to be living at maturity. Okay, and we can also see there are some small spaces in between these parenchyma cells here. And of course the aranchyma cells are gonna have much bigger spaces um, with oxygen. Okay, so if you remember, we talked about aranchyma, those are from the aquatic plants. With chlorenchyma, those have chloroplasts. So those are gonna be photosynthetic. You can recognize the chlorenchyma because they're green. Um, we also have transfer cells, and a good example of where to find those would be in the nectaries of uh, flowers. So if you remember when we talked about the uh, new cell wall forming, how it will have uh, plasma desmata that are going to have uh, basically a strand that goes in between two cells so that the two cells are connected, this is going to be um, similar. It's going to allow uh, substances to pass from one cell to another or be transferred from one cell to another. Okay, next is calenchyma. So let's take a look at the picture on the right here. You can see that these cell walls are unevenly thickened. They just have a primary cell wall and those are going to be the main characteristics of the calenchyma. Um, they are going to be living at maturity and these are a little bit less flexible and a little bit more plastic. So they still can de-differentiate and re-differentiate in some cases, but not nearly as easily as the parenchyma. Remember the parenchyma, those are the most totipotent. Uh, these have a lot thicker cell wall in terms of calenchyma. Okay, and next we have the sclerids. So we got the stone cells on the top right and then the astrosclerids on the bottom. Um, and here you can see that these are going to be as long as they are wide if you look at the, uh, the stone cells or the brachiosclerids on the top right. Ooh, this one is kind of cool. Um, so here you can see both the cross section of the fibers as well as uh, longitudinal where you know you're like looking at the whole fiber. So for the one on the left that's like you're looking down into the plants and one thing that I want to point out here is with these fibers their secondary cell wall is really thick to the point where um, the little space inside of the cell is practically not even there. So that's one thing that you could look out for if you're trying to differentiate a fiber from a vessel element, which is the xylary cell. Um, they have a really thick cell wall and not too much space inside of the cell. Um, when I look at this one on the right, it kind of reminds me of panic grass. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen um, growing in a, like a wetland or a place that is um, partially flooded, maybe in a wash, but there are some really large six foot grasses called panic grasses, and they're actually um, invasive. And they come from Asia. They're pretty um, difficult to control because they have these fibers that are so strong. If you try and pull it out with your hand, it's actually gonna cut your hand open. That's how strong these fibers are. So when we talk about the fibers functioning for anti-herbivory, um, I mean, if you tried to eat something like that, it would literally slice your mouth open. Okay, we got a few more minutes here. So what about more complex tissues? They're gonna have more than one type of cell. All right, so the vascular tissue is going to be composed of both xylem and phloem. Uh, xylem is going to conduct water and minerals. And we will have some parenchyma cells mixed in with our fibers and our vessel elements. 
And uh, the tracheids, remember, those are going to be found in the conifers that are less evolved than our flowering plants. Oh, cool. Okay, so here we can see a few different examples of vessel elements. And they're a little bit uh, wider and they have this big perforation plate if you were to compare them to a fiber. Um, like I said before, they can conduct water both from top to bottom as well as side to side. And this is a really great picture on the bottom right of the spiral thickenings of lignin that are there reinforcing the secondary cell wall of the vessel elements. So think about it. <laughs> These vessel elements make up the xylem. The xylem is wood. This is like an individual um, cell out of the xylem. So it's gonna be really strong and durable. Okay, tracheids, those are gonna be the ones that we typically find in the conifers. And as you can see, they have these pits that allow them to transfer the water from side to side, but they can't move the water um, top to bottom directly because they don't have the perforation plates um, on the end. That's talking about the individual cells. Um, so similar to our vessel elements and our fibers, the tracheids are dead in maturity and they do have that thick secondary cell wall composed of lignin. Okay, moving on to the next vascular tissue that is phloem. So phloem is going to move the sugars and um, other organic compounds that are produced by photosynthesis, um, as well as secondary metabolites. This is going to be made up of the sieve tube members, companion cells, fibers, <laughs> parenchyma, and rays. So let's see if we have, oh, we have a good graphic here. So take a look here on the right. Um, you can see each of the individual sieve tube members, these are those long uh, tube shaped cells. They have this sieve plate that allows the sugar to be uh, transferred from one cell to another to basically move throughout the plant. And it's interesting here because it says there are strands of cytoplasm that are going from one sieve tube member to another. So these guys are actually uh, connected and they have the companion cells in between. Those are the parenchyma cells that are gonna function for the intercellular communication. Okay, next is the epidermis. Um, what I really wanna point out here is the cuticle, the waxy cuticle, and you can see it looks um, a bit orange here on the top and bottom of the leaf. I don't think that we talked about that very much um, in the previous slide set. And the waxy cuticle, a good example of a plant that has this that I can think of would be citrus, like an orange or a lemon tree, and they have the really waxy leaves. I can also think of um, like a jade plant or a succulent has a waxy cuticle as well. And this is going to help to prevent water loss from the plant. So that waxy layer is hydrophobic. It is not going to allow water to pass through readily. All right, guys, I think that that is all of the time that we have for today.